Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. You busy, Slate? I'm all finished, Taylor. Come on in. Look who came calling. Well, Kip Ross. How's it going, Kip? I don't know. All right, I guess. Close the door. Have a seat. I was just rearranging my office furniture. This happens every other day, Kip. All Slate's got in this office is a desk and a chair, so he shifts drawers. <laughs> and Slate, that's a very clever place to put an inkwell, on the floor. What are you going to do? Use a pen with a long quill? Let's leave it on the desk, huh? So I forgot it. Why don't you keep out of this, sailor? Last time you were in my office, you used my desk for an ironing board. Now look at my desk blotter. It's dented with shoulder straps. Well, what can we do for you, Kip? I brought you a painting. I had it framed because... No, I'm afraid we can't use it. No place for it. Why don't you just look at it? Look, you know what you want to do? Instead of hanging around Havana and painting things that no one understands, why don't you do something important with your art? Paint calendars, do comic strips. Slate. The man asked you to look at his painting. Maybe you'll like it, Slate. Here. Well? Oh, fantastic. You like it, huh? It's a masterpiece. I spent a good deal of time on it. Well, you should be proud. I've never seen it. Hey. Hey, this boat is a bold venture, isn't it? And that's me at the wheel. It ain't Admiral Dewey on his favorite poop deck. Hey, what do you want for it, Kip? Nothing. I want you to have it. Because you've been, well... Havana isn't the best place in the world to be hungry. Ah, oh, forget it. I'll hang your painting here, right in my office. And whatever happens, don't let it get away from you. Let it get away? Something as great as this? You out of your mind? You can get into your other things now, Barbara. The light's gone. No more painting today. May I look at it? Sure. Like it? Oh, it, it makes me cry. You, you've made me beautiful. Ah, give a hack a paintbrush, two bucks worth of canvas, and you to pose? What else can he do? When you're rich, it won't matter what you think of yourself or your painting. Whether you admire or hate it, it won't matter. I told you, Barbara, we don't talk about it anymore. We drop it, you hear? We drop it in the nearest gutter. It's not the thing to do with $50,000, Kip. That much money makes you and me a gentleman and a lady. Try to understand me, lady. I stole the Da Vinci off a museum wall because what's between me and Da Vinci belongs to me. An affinity, they call it. Private. Personal. That's why you slapped a painting of Shannon and his boat all over it? It's that personal between you and an old, old Da Vinci? As long as it hangs in Shannon's office, I live the good, shoddy, crummy life of a crummy artist. And the citizens forget their loss, I take the Da Vinci off Shannon's wall... And then blow my brains out because I can't paint like that. Oh, you're a fool, Kip. That art dealer, that Gordon McLean said he'd give you 50000 for it. He's that hungry for it. We could haggle for more if that's what you're trying to say. What's he paid you to convince me, Barbara? I made him give me 10000 deposit. I said, put your money where your mouth is, McLean. <laughs> that's what I said. Take it back. I've got no use for it. Oh, Kip. It does something to me to call you an idiot. I sell that picture. The citizen will abhor me, hunt me down, lock me behind stone. Tell the dealer no deal, Barbara. Because you love me, have faith in me. Because you made me so beautiful in my portrait. Because you are an idiot. <laughs>
How does it look hanging here, Mr. Slate? Uh, it might be a little too high. It's too low. Slate, we don't hang pictures at the level of the waist. We hang... Whose office is this? I want to be able to look at that painting when I'm sitting at my desk. I don't want to have to stand on a chair when... Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, there was no one out at the front desk, so I saw the office sign and I came right in. You want me to register this gentleman, Mr. Slate? Sure, go ahead. Say, that's a fine painting you have hanging there. Hmm, mighty fine. You sound like you know. Yes, yes, I do. My business is knowing. I'm an art dealer. Name's McLean. Kid named Kip Ross painted that. He's got a lot of paintings. I'll give you his address. Maybe you can do each other some good. Such a feeling this one has of the sea and sky and vastness. Vastness, huh? I told you he made you look too fat, Slate. What would you take for this painting? Sorry, it's not for sale. Does an offer of $1,000 make it for sale? Sure it does. What are you looking at me like that for, Slate? Give the money to Kip and get him to paint you another he one. He told me to hang on to this painting, remember? But for $1,000... If someone offered me a million, I still... 2000 Sold to the man who just came through the door. No sale. You're being very stupid. Take yourself a powder, Buster. Beat it. Stupid. It's a very poor painting, and I'm offering you... Out! Uh, oh, Come on, friend! You don't know what you're doing! You want me to take his bag, Mr. Slate? I'll handle him. Out! It's your turn to close your mouth, sailor. But he said $2,000. And he also said it was a bad painting. And you know something? He's right. Two grand for a lousy canvas. Let's see if we can get a better offer. <laughs> You happy now, knucklehead? You happy that every art dealer in Havana fingered the carnation in his lapel and screamed that Kip Ross paintings were a drug on the market? And those experts aren't just beating their nosegays. But you turned down $2,000 from a sweet, nice, eccentric philanthropist like McLean. 2000 for a painting that hasn't even got a dish of dead fruit in it? You know, that's real eccentric. Well, maybe McLean saw you once on our boat and wants the memory never to... Oh, Slate, look at those little turtles in the pet shop window with scenes of colorful Havana painted on their backs. Buy me a boy and girl turtle slate. Those turtles will eat you out of house and home. They're slow, but they're sure. Where else can I get pictures of Havana that walk by you on four legs? Now, that's what I call art. Coming in with me, Slate? No, I'll wait for you out here. There's lots of two-legged art on this promenade. Okay, pet shop cowboy. My, Shannon, what a windy corner you picked. I heard you speak your name. It stopped me. Sent a current through me. You are Slate Shannon, hmm? Just me mentioning my name did all that to you, right here? To me. To Barbara Hill. <laughs> right here. I wonder if you could direct me to 23 Avenida Batista. Just like that, I feel quite lost. You haven't been in Havana long, Miss Hill. Lived here all my life, Mr. Shannon. Lost, huh? What impression would you get of Havana if one of its boys didn't help a girl who's lost in our big, frightening city? You call a cab. I'll pay the fare. Now, that's a square deal if ever I heard one. One minute, hon. Hey, sailor, catch. What's the dime for? Bus fare. You'll need it to get home. Did you enjoy the grand tour of my apartment wall, Slate? Sure. Your collection of paintings is very interesting. Is that why you brought me here? Adult education is a fine thing, Slate. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like art? Nuts about it, especially stuff like this. Paintings, etchings, sketches. All of them about the sea. Excite you? What is it with you, Barbara? What have you got on your mind? You. You see... I have good taste in all things. Haven't I? Sure. How did you know who I was on the street? Don't ask questions, Slate. Never ask questions, Slate. Let me close my eyes again. Look, sis, I, I don't know what you're trying to build. I've got a big, fat painting of my own I can look at, and while I'm looking, I can put my feet up on the desk. I want to see. Well, my feet? Tell me a little something about your childhood, Barbara. The painting. It was just a picture of a boat. You've got a lot of them here. Better. I want to see it. All right. You want to bid on it? Why 
What? Uh, nothing. Come on, Barbara. Now I'll broaden your mind. Oh, I remember you. You're McLean, and you've broken your arm. That's why you didn't knock on the office door. You're alone, Miss Duval? Me and 29 guests. If I scream, 17 will come running. 17. That's our boy population. You register, and it'll make 18. Would uh, Shannon come running? I doubt it. He got blown away on a breezy corner. Good. You were quite amenable the last time we met, Miss Duval. What is your mood now, without uh, Shannon to distract you? Without Shannon, the price of the painting goes up to three grand. A girl's got to look out for her commission. Three thousand. In small bills? <laughs> Look who calls who amenable. Make it four grand. <laughs> You've been joshing me. Golly, you know a josh when you meet one, don't you, kid? Yeah, I was joshing. I just wanted to see how high you'd go for slate and crude oil. Now you know. Now you know how I get it for nothing. Scream, Miss Duval. And when your boy guests come running, they'll find your lovely corpse. You know, if you didn't wear a gun in your hand, you wouldn't be half so attractive, Mr. McLean. Hmm, it does suit me, doesn't it? The picture, Miss Duval. It's hanging on the wall. Go hang alongside of it. I want to watch you get it for me, and then carry it through Havana streets. I'm a lazy man, Miss Duval. Just enough energy to pin a bullet right through your back. And you know, I'd do it, too. <laughs> Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. In office she hang a picture of a boat, Mr. Slate on her deck in a pea jacket coat. With a captain blood look and a wheel in his hand. Oh, father or mother is more than man can stand. But Mr. Slate, he have light breeze in his head. With two thousand dollars can get out of red. But he will not part with the oil painting. In state asylum can explain such a thing. <laughs> Oh, aren't you going to applaud, Barbara? That's King's latest effort. It might sell half a copy. I don't coordinate well. I can't applaud with my mouth open. Oh, sure you can. Hey, you see how simple it is? Go on, try it. You were offered $2,000 for a painting and you turned it down? This is a picture I must see. Oh, you promised, Slade. First, I wanted you to know all about me. Meet my hotel, meet King here. As I have heard it said, likewise, I'm sure, Miss Hill. How can you judge a painting of a man if you don't know what a man's like deep down inside? As I remember the picture, Mr. Slate, the artist's intention was the illumination of the tragic struggle between the sea and the craft of frailty. You are but there as a somber blob to give it dynamic symmetry. You are quite blobby in it. <laughs> What's the matter, King? You jealous he didn't paint your portrait? Come on, Barbara, how do you discuss art with an ignoramus? It's in my office. Who offered you all that money, Slade? Guy named McLean. Gordon McLean. Know him? Kind of paunchy with. Hey. Hey, it's gone. The picture's gone. King, my painting's gone. Who took it? Where did Sailor go to sell it? I do not know, Mr. Slade. She went away with you. She did not come back with you. You came back with. The... I know Miss Sailor. Yeah. For a fellow who stands on windy corners, I sure lose a lot of things, don't I, King? <laughs> Inside, Miss Duval. Good. Sit down if you want. Stand on your head if you want. Just don't try to get out of this apartment. 
You know, Mother started to tell me about men like you, Mr. McLean. But in the middle of it, she got a phone call from Aunt Ilka. So she went to the movies with Aunt Ilka, and I never got to hear the rest of it. I hope she enjoyed the film. Now, just be quiet for a moment. I want to look at this picture. Tell me something, Mr. McLean. Save it. Oh, it's you, Kip. Come on in. You know her? What are you doing here, Mr. Val? I got heisted. Me and your painting. What? What are you talking about? What do you want, Kip? I came here to tell you no deal. Go home. Forget it. See if I'm translating well today. You don't want Mr. McLean to have your painting, do you? Well, he's got it, Kip. There it is, on the table, face down. I advise you not to touch that painting, Kip. It's mine. I want to... Don't think unkindly of me, Miss Duval. I told him, don't touch. How do I get it through that official skull of yours, LaSalle? For a painting that's worth two grand to a paunchy dealer, you could get up off your fat wicker chair. You did not have it insured? Go make other shoulders damp with your tears, Shannon. I have damp tears of my own. I'll wear them in good health. I weep because from the National Museum of Classic Art has been stolen a da Vinci of such exquisite artistry, of such delicious value, that the art lovers of Havana are yapping at my wicker chair. A da Vinci, huh? I bother you with a lousy little seascape. More than bother, senor. You dull me with it. <laughs> There's one more work of art I want to report missing, LaSalle. A calendar? A pin-up? Well, you could call her that. Sailor. Hmm? Huh? She's lost, straight, or stolen for five hours now. Permit me a word of philosophy, Senor Shannon. You are not the last man in the world. Kill me. But you are not. Perhaps your Miss Duval has flew the coop. Yeah, perhaps. But don't stay awake nights dreaming about it, LaSalle. Someday Sailor will have to come home for her other pair of jeans. <laughs> Yes? Good. Send him right up. Now we shall see, Mr. Val. We're really going to see. I'm happy for you, Mr. McLean. What are you looking for? I just want to make sure, that's all, that under this painting is the Da Vinci. A Da Vinci? You know, Mr. Val, earlier I said Mr. Shannon was stupid. Uh, quite a lot of it rubbed off on you. So that's what's with this painting. Somebody took a valuable piece of art and smeared it with a can of house paint to make it look like a boat. Uh, Kip was such a poor painter. Artist leagues all over the world should applaud me for getting rid of him. Look at him. Even in death, he's overplaying it. He... Come in, Ramos. Uh, si, senor. Uh, the painting she's wearing. On the table. Quickly, find out for me. Dulce senor, gently. Ah. First, I must put the solution to the gauze, the gauze to a corner of the picture, and poco a poco, little by little, comes off the first coat. And underneath? Yeah, underneath. Look at it, <sighs> like something alive. Fifty thousand dollars worth. Ramos. Si, senor. You understand that you can't afford not to do what I tell you. Oh, comprendo, senor, I understand. Keep her here. I'm going to make arrangements to leave Havana. I'll see you soon. Ramos. Si, senorita. You're a jerk. Of oh, this I have been accused too, senorita. But my most important fault is that I am a forger of paintings for whom the police search the nooks and crannies of Havana. Do not try to give me the business with nice words and eye winking. That painting's a da Vinci. And it is beloved to me. So you can't go to the police, huh? Well, how would you like to tear this room apart and wind up with a reward? All you've got to do is see a man named Slate Shannon. You'll see him. What did you do with that painting, Mr. Duval? I told you Ramos took it. You saw the way the room looked, didn't you? You found me tied up. I battled with the man. Why did you fight with him? Because I'm a girl who knows which side her paintings are buttered on. I like the way you operate. And I like your Da Vinci. Mm, you want in, huh? 
Well, I'll think about it, baby. Hold a pucker for me. I'll be right back to take it away from you. Open your eyes, Slade. You open them, kid. I'm tired. You've been sitting here in your office pretending to wonder what's become of the painting and all the time you knew. Don't tease me anymore, Slade. Tell me where it is. Bargain for it, honey. I don't mind. Tell me what you've done with it. And there's no dream you've ever dreamed that won't come true. Oh, some of them run into big dough. How much? Ten thousand? Twenty? With uh, Barbara for a bonus? You're that much of a fan of Kip's paintings that you'd pay twenty thousand and uh, what you said? Not for a cheap piece of billboard art that Kip's so good at, but for a Da Vinci. Any figure you long for. Up to 20,000. Da Vinci? What Da Vinci? Where Da Vinci? The one Kip stole. The one he slobbered over with a tired brush. The one he gave you. Do not take the time to insult me for eavesdropping, senor, senorita. It will only roll off my back like off a duck. You see, I'm a criminal and used to insults. But I've got the time for this, Chico. Oh, you have an artist for the city response, senor. I consider this to be the proper moment for an artist to give you a message from the storming senorita Duval. Huh? Uh, Hey, somewhat stunning all in one room. A prisoner, Gordon McLean, a captive. How oh, I could forge a painting of that technicolor queen. Where? The Las Flores Apartments, Apartment 3. Tell her I sent you. Hey, my pants look good like this. I in the waist. You lied to me, Miss Duval. Ramos didn't take that painting. Oh, yes, he did. I'm a patient man, and I've got all of three seconds' patience left. Now, where is it? Tell me, or... Hi, sailor. Hi, McLean. You two getting along well? What are you doing here? I need a clean shirt for tonight. I came to get sailor. Talk to the fellow. He was just going to take the starch out of me. Have you got that painting, Shannon? Did Ramos give it to you? All he gave me was an address, and he said I didn't have to knock. Come here, Shannon. I want to show you what you walked into without knocking. Pretty? No, he's not pretty, is he? This gun can make you twins. What made it so important to kill Kip? He tried to deprive me of something. Uh, worried girl I just took home said it might be a Da Vinci painting. Shannon. Yeah? Ramus came right to you. Miss Duval sent him to you. Ramus and Miss Duval. Make her tell you what happened to the painting. What about it, sailor? What happens if I don't tell you? You're going to beat me? Well, it'll keep me alive, I will. There you go, always thinking of yourself. Look, sailor, if we had a Da Vinci, what would we do with it? What other people do? Have people in to look at it. Throw up our hands in admiration of it. Dust it. So we own a Da Vinci. I'm through playing, kiddies. You two want to go out together? I don't know. Mr. McLean, uh, do me a favor. What? That light's in my eyes. Pull down the shade. You know, pulling this trigger is going to save you a trip to the clinic. Your brain will make a study for the police doctors. Pull down the shade and I'll tell you where the painting is. All right, we'll try it that way. The painting! My Da Vinci! This is yours, too! You, you, you want to take it away from me? Well, you won't. Who I want it! <sighs> Look at this point, sailor. It just sagged. Who wants to look at paunches? Aren't you going to tell me how clever I am, pinning that Da Vinci to a window shade? Yeah, clever people like you are lucky to stay alive. But I'm alive. Want me to prove it? Oh, I haven't got the strength to fight you off, sailor. Wait till we get home. Look, Slate, aren't they wonderful? Two turtles. You mean you bought them? They waved their shells at me. I couldn't resist. Say, what is it with you, trying to build a menagerie? Seagull named Melvin, now two turtles. 
This one's named Tiger. And this one is El Toro, the bull. Yeah. <laughs> the appropriate names for turtles not quite an inch long. How do you tell them apart? El Toro always knocks on Tiger's shell and asks her to come out. Look at them rubbing noses. I wonder how that feels. Close your eyes. All right. Oh, I like that. Do it again. You like it, huh? Hmm, what I've been missing. Cool. Again. Yeah, well, uh, wait till I get El Toro, sailor. You just wore Tiger out. She went back into a shell. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.